In this simple tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can work with the Fireworks JS library. It's going to be very, very simple. So this is our simple markup, a div with a class of Fireworks div, and also a div with a class of text holding this H5 element with Merry Christmas 2021 as the text. So CSS is already defined. We're not going to write CSS. I just want us to jump straight to JavaScript. And if you are to visit their official profile on the NPM JS site, this is what you'll be seeing. So they'll show you the different ways you can work with this, installing it using NPM, using the online CDN links, and how to use this. So we are going to be using the content delivery network link, the CDN. So copy this, paste it in your profile. So for you on code pin right now, but for you guys, if you want to work with it offline on your local machine, just download the zipped files and unzip them on your PC and link to it locally on your machine. So depending on the folder that you'll be using, make sure you link it to the document that you'll be working on. But right now we're using this global content delivery network link. So you can just link it on your page and you have this run within no time. So if you are to go to our JavaScript, what we want to do is get a hook on this element. So I'm going to create a variable here and it's user defined. You can call it anything that you want. I'm going to call it fire div and assign it to document. Let me pull this up. Document dot query selector query selector selector and then get the class that you put on that element you can put a period and do that so we are just selecting this element with a class of fireworks div very very simple now we are going to create another variable here and it's also user defined you can call it anything you want so fireworks, I just want to make it obvious because we are working with the fireworks. Then we call the new fireworks method or class. We are just initiating it. So fireworks and this takes in two parameters. First is the element that you want to act on or targeting and the element that we selected is now stored inside this variable. Remember we created fire div and assigned it to this and what this is it's this element that you're seeing here so what's mean what it is meaning this variable that you're seeing fire div is having that element right now so you pass it here and then the second parameter is an object and this object is going to be full of options very very simple now for our, for our fireworks to start we just need to call that variable fireworks and we say dot start we call the start method and within time after running this run button or clicking on that run button we should see fireworks on our page remember we link to this on the page and they're telling me i have an error here where is that error Unexpected an identifier. Where is that? Oh, const. Sorry, guys. Let us run it again. I miss tapped const, but we should be uh, should see our fireworks going off. So sorry for that lousy mistake. But right now, as you can see, we are having our fireworks running very very simple now as i told you this object takes in options and there are very very many options as you can see on their official page so we're having rocked rocket point opacity speed acceleration friction gravity particles so let us start with the obvious ones so i'm going to start with the trace and what trace is it's the trace it leaves before exploding. As you can see, it is right now short. 
I think the default is like five, but if you are to put, let's say 20, you're going to see the trace it leaves. The length of that fireworks before it explodes, the trace it leaves behind. So let us run. You're going to see how long it will be. You see that, are you seeing? It's like 20 pixels in height before exploding. So that's the trace option. Let us put it at around 10. Then the next thing is particles option. Not thing, it's option particles. And right now, by default, there are 50 those particles that explode. But you can put them, let's say, at a hand at 200. Run. So I never put it on auto preview when you save or type. So those are 200 particles. Every time it explodes, those are 200 particles. At fa the default is 50, I guess. Yeah, 50. And then for us, we just put 200. So every time it explodes, you will see that. You get it? Yeah. Now, we're having explosion, speed, acceleration. So let that be your practice. Go on trying out these options and see what will work for you. Now the last thing is, what if you don't want this effect to be running forever and ever on your site? You just want the user to come on the site, see this effect after some period of time and it stops. And this fireworks method, like this fireworks instance now has a lot of method. There is fireworks.start, fireworks.stop, fireworks.pause, fireworks.clear. So right now what you're going to use is fireworks.stop. So you can write this set timeout function, set timeout, and it's a function, you put in a callback function, and you put in the time when you want this function to stop. So it's going to be after some 10 seconds. So here I'll say, 10,000 milliseconds, that's one second. And here we call fireworks.stop. Remember there is this, so, so we have access to this method of stop since we initiated this, so new fireworks. So if you are to run this, so it's going to run when the user lands on the page and after some, 10 seconds, they are going to stop and clear that instance, all these fireworks. Are you seeing? That's it. But if the user refreshes the page, this effect is going to run again. As you can see, we are just having 10, 11 lines of code to have such an effect. Run it again. So only 10, only 11 lines of code to have that effect, unless you pass in other more options as you can see them here depending on what you want so guys subscribe to the channel if this tutorial was useful to you and i will always be seeing you in the next tutorials peace